Republicans have too many freedoms. President Clinton, for example, wants to increase the powers of the FBI, and he has denounced so-called hate speech. Now, some saw that as an attack on freedom of speech and the press. Which brings us to a very interesting question right now. Is the U.S. Constitution outdated? With that in mind, we decided to invite in our next guest. He is Dr. Gerald Linewan, and he's written a very provocative book called Do We Need a New Constitution? And uh, in just a moment, uh, as soon as we get our microphones fixed, I'll, I'll hold up the book here. Here it is. Uh, publisher, uh, Franklin Watts Library Edition, correct? Welcome to the program, sir. Yes, thank you. All right. Now, it's very interesting that... Uh, in the wake of all that's happened in the past couple of weeks, this is a very timely book, but what prompted you to write this book in the first place? The idea for the book um, grows out of, for one thing, the audience for which it's written, mm -hmm. namely a non-specialized uh, audience, people who would like a kind of first pass at a controversial issue, and this gives it to them in, uh, in non-technical language. Secondly, it grows out of the fact that uh, during the Bush administration, very uh, largely, we spoke a good deal about gridlock, mm -hmm. about divided government, right. about uh, federalism, and these are, uh, raised questions about whether or not we need to start all over again. Well, let's go back to history now. I happen to think that the Constitution was a gem of a document uh, drafted some 200 years ago. My initial response would be, no, of course it's not outdated. It's practically perfect. Um, do you think we need a new Constitution? The conclusion in this book is no. It, sh it shows both sides, but the conclusion comes down to the fact that, as you say, it's a uh, gem. It's something that Roosevelt said, that it should be read the way one reads the Bible. Mm -hmm. However, in a, um, in a poll taken of the American people, yes. they came to a conclusion similar to yours. This is a gem, that it shouldn't be changed. But then they went on to say, we need this change or that change or the other change. And uh, so they, in some sense, it's not inviolable. It's not uh, holy writ. We should talk specifically about the events of the past couple of weeks because I've never heard the Constitution mentioned so much as in the past uh, several days regarding the debate. For example, let's start with the FBI. Now, President Clinton wants to expand the powers of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. I saw Janet Reno uh, on uh, Meet the Press say, let's not... Uh, yes, the name, right. Yeah. Yeah. And I would, I would side with her. I am afraid, uh, Dr. Linewan, that we are in our haste and our anger going to be calling for an expansion of powers uh, for the Bureau that would be a, a terrible, terrible mistake and would in fact violate the Constitution. What are your feelings on that? There are several uh, ways to approach it. For one thing, one could say that the FBI has all the power that it needs now. Mm -hmm. It has been under restraints going back to the days uh, of uh, under uh, J. Edgar Hoover, right. when it ran rampant. It investigated students who uh, opposed the Vietnam War. It investigated uh, Martin Luther King Jr. It inquired after people who allegedly were defaulting in income taxes when they, in effect, were not. Mm -hmm. But under internal uh, documents and internal decisions, they uh, restrained themselves. So I would think that the first thing to do is to examine whether or not the FBI indeed has enough powers now. Well, what the president wants to do, I believe, is to have uh, the feds get more power in gathering evidence against groups that may not have done anything wrong, just groups that they think they are think so, right, yeah. right, maybe they read a newspaper article and they say, you know, let's watch this particular organization. Problem with that, constitutionally? Well, the problem with it is uh, one that many of these groups have uh, innocuous sounding names. Mm -hmm. And in his proposed legislation, he doesn't make a distinction mm -hmm. between those who are uh, really maintaining and supporting what we might call private armies and those who are genuinely raising money for a uh, respectable cause. In addition to that, the pattern of fighting international terrorism is not identical with the, fight, with the need to battle domestic terrorism. And I think his legislation, or the proposed legislation, tends to obfuscate the difference between the two. Let's go to something else the president said in the wake of the terrorist attack on the federal building in Oklahoma City. He didn't ban hate speech, but he did say we need to tone it down. 
Are we getting into dangerous area here? I mean, the radio talk show hosts uh, immediately got very nervous, uh, assuming that he was perhaps talking about them. And they saw it as an infringement of free speech, freedom of the press. Your opinion? When it comes to freedom of expression, I'm almost an absolutist <laughs> on that score. <laughs> and so I, I don't like the hate speech, but I don't like to curb it. Uh, as well. And it becomes a very difficult uh, dilemma, both on uh, television and on the internet, where you can get information on how to mix a bomb and how to uh, uh, detonate it and, uh, and so on. And yet you see it as being a little bit pregnant. There, there's either censorship or there's not. That's a big problem with that whole uh, with that whole area. You could say being a little bit pregnant, it's the slippery slope, uh, when do you stop? And uh, it becomes a dangerous thing dangerous thing to do. However, the, uh, to get back to the Constitution for a minute, mm -hmm. Amendment 2, mm -hmm. part of the Bill of Rights, says, talks about a well-regulated militia. The, the Second uh, Amendment. This the is second the one that the gun groups right. have. Okay, I'm going to quote it because right. I have yep. it in front of right. me. I, I made a point of copying down these beloved amendments that people are constantly quoting. Okay, Amendment 2 reads as follows. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now, Professor, I always hear the second part, from, especially from the gun lobby. You never All right, yeah, part. sure. What were you going to say? Well, I was going to say that the first part needs emphasis. A well-regulated <laughs> militia, regulated by state or federal mm -hmm. government. Uh, these groups have been running rampant in uh, really developing private armies, uh, stores of material, weapons which are beyond the law insofar as in, uh, uh, interstate uh, transportation, and certainly they need substantial regulation. Uh, that's an area that uh, perhaps uh, ought to be pursued with greater vigor. Our guest is Dr. Gerald Leinwand, and he is the author of Do We Need a New Constitution? He's president of Western Oregon State College. Think about this. The Constitution was drafted some 200 years ago. Is it protecting our rights? Is it too full of contradictions? Keep in mind that this document was written before the automobile, the airplane, the telephone and television, not to mention computers, nuclear bombs, the fax machine. Is it out of date? Well, that's the question being asked by our guest. He feels no, it is not. The host agrees, but let's hear what you have to say. At 212-267-WNYC, 267-9692. Let's take some phone calls now for Gerald Linewan. We go first to Arthur in Brooklyn. Hello, Arthur. Hello, how are you? Well, I would like to disagree with your remark about uh, <coughs> the uh, banning uh, hate uh, speech mm -hmm. being unconstitutional. I think it's constitutional. In uh, why? Okay, you know what, I'm going to interrupt you because I, I want my guest to put his headphones on so he can hear your question. I think they're over there. There you go. Okay, the question was about um, hate speech, and Arthur from Brooklyn thinks that what, banning hate speech is not unconstitutional? No, um, just pick it up from where we left off. Uh, the, the First Amendment, by the way, do you have it in front of you? Me? Yeah, you? <laughs> no, I didn't think so. I know enough. Okay, I'm going to read it. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. So now, why I do you think uh, banning hate speech is uh, well, constitutional? Well, just from what you just read now, mm -hmm. No individual, by, simply by virtue of this ethnic uh, group, is, uh, is uh, inferior or in any way to any other individual, either worse or better or on, more honest, more intelligent or anything like that. And, and, to, uh, and, to, and, to, uh, and to try to uh, inflame uh, the, uh, the populace against that person uh, to, is, to, is to attempt to injure him. Uh, so I don't think uh, that's a freedom that our Constitution would support. It's 
not to speak to self, it's the freedom to speak that way. There is no freedom to injure anybody. Well, what about it, Dr. There, there is... It, there, there is no freedom to injure anybody, but in the area of speech, there's a narrow line between when does speech become action, and it's finding that level that we resort to the courts and decide on an individual basis. It's very hard, it's very hard to lay down a very clear p principle that would pertain to all situations all the time, and it's that very tension that really makes democracy possible. Guns? A well-regulated militia? Mm -hmm. Now, uh, it's true that the Declaration of Independence uh, sort of supports the idea that Americans should be able to overthrow a, uh, a government if it should become, um, um, what's the word, if it's it, 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 uh, dictatorial or in some way bridge, uh, bridge, bridge uh, our, our civil rights, take too much power to itself. So why is the Second Amendment uh, uh, not accurate for you? Well, uh, I, I don't think that uh, there's any possibility that uh, small, uh, small uh, arms are going to, uh, are going to possibly overthrow this government. Uh, okay, let's let our guest respond. There are some 30 such groups where they to get together and deny uh, <laughs> and deny opportunity to everyone else, we would have a dictatorship. It's not that these groups are looking for freedom, they're looking to take freedom away. They're hostile to every, uh, every conceivable uh, uh, thought uh, that uh, contributes to a democratic behavior. Uh, it was uh, Jefferson who said, uh, a revolution every 20 years is good for a country. I wonder whether you'd uh, stop that kind of expression uh, because it's uh, allegedly dangerous. You know, Professor, what really chilled me in reading the news reports about the bomb attack in Oklahoma City is that some law enforcement officials were saying, knowing what we know about some of these far, far, far right groups, this kind of thing was inevitable. That gives you pause. It, it does. We were strangely unprepared for it. The Anti-Defamation League put out a uh, brilliant analysis about a year ago uh, suggesting the um, threat that these groups uh, posed, but nobody paid any attention to it. And uh, we do not have a tradition of intervening before the act. We tend to intervene after the act and uh, react, really, rather than to anticipate. All right, let's uh, take some more phone calls for you. Uh, this is Michael in Brooklyn. Go ahead, Michael. Yes, um, I, don't, I don't know about the whole...